Good morning, everybody. Um, when I started these slides, I was a little bit wondering about what I thought what the topic would be. Uh, PHP 5.4 an update. Is the session an update on what's going on, or will PHP 5.4 be only a, s a small update which you can easily apply to your systems? I'm not right sure which of the both I'm going to talk about, maybe about both. Making this an update session, talking about an update of current PHP versions. Um, so, who am I? I'm Johannes. I'm working at, at Oracle in the MySQL engineering team, uh, where I'm doing all different kinds of stuff um, related to PHP, basically trying to make uh, MySQL more accessible to all of you developing PHP. Uh, at the same time, um, a bit outside of, of my job, I'm doing the release management for the current series of PHP 5.3, but I'm going to talk here about PHP 5.4. Uh, release management basically means that I'm responsible for everything which is broken in PHP 5.3, and if something is very good in PHP 5.3, come to me, talk to me, and I will tell you who is responsible and whom you can send a gift or whatever to say thank you for implementing a feature. If you want to read my blog or email me or follow me on Twitter, um, there's the information about that. Now, um, why doesn't this work as it's supposed to be? Um, so, um, version distribution, I, I think I'm always wondering a little bit about. It's a bit hard to see you all with the lights on here from stage, but we will do it anyways. Who is still using PHP 4, having to care about PHP, 5, uh, PHP 4? One person, two, three, four. You poor people. You, you're very poor. Um, I hope you get the chance to update to a more modern version of PHP at some time or get rid of the project or whatever. Uh, who's using PHP 5.2 mainly or has to care about PHP 5.2 compatibility? That's a few more. PHP 5.3, who's using PHP 5.3 stuff only? Oh, it's about the same, a little bit more on PHP 5.3 maybe. Uh, why are you using 5.2 still? It's, uh, the update to 5.3 is quite easy, and PHP 5.2 is out of support by php.net, um, so you should update, especially as the next update is coming, and the next one is coming, and the next one is coming, and the next one is coming. Um, that's a quite old statistic, by the way. It's just from an application where we have a calling home feature integrated, and that's over quite a few years span, so it's no current statistic on what's go out, but PHP 5.2 is, I guess, still the, the dominant platform, unfortunately. Um, that's broken. Now it's there. That's a problem with these, this Office program I'm using for this presentation that sometimes it loses part of the content. Anyways, who heard about PHP 6 in the past? Who tried it out? Derek is the only one? Yeah, good for you since PHP 6 is dead. And oh, we discovered some years ago, well, we have this PHP 6 project going on, which was a major effort to bring more native Unicode into the PHP runtime, into PHP, making it more Unicode aware from engine level. And then we figured, hmm, it's taking so much time to do. You have so many other features. So let's bring out a new version, and we call that uh, PHP 5.3. So what Andre mostly was talking about back then, he was um, driving the PHP 6 project for some time was that PHP 5.3 is PHP 6 without the Unicode stuff. Um, so we introduced namespaces, we in introduced anonymous functions or closures or whatever you want to call them, and some other things in PHP 5.3, and released that as a step towards PHP 6. Now it's a few years later, and we figured out, well, we have so many things ready, and this PHP 6 project is going nowhere. So nowadays we could say PHP 5.4 is PHP 6 without Unicode. Well, without, with the small difference that um, PHP 6 is a cancelled project for now, and we are moving it away. 
and maybe someday we start with a new approach for doing deeper Unicode integration. Maybe not. We will see. One, one thing about releases of software and updates, the first question always is, what will it break? Can I simply update it and run my applications as they were? And well, PHP 6, uh, PHP 5.4, how do you get PHP 6 in my head? Um, PHP 5.4 will break things. And I, and I consider it a good thing to do. Um, since what we are breaking are mostly old stuff, that's a rough list of, of things which are going to break. I'm going to talk about some of these in detail. One I'm not going to talk about, for instance, since it doesn't matter, is uh, Y2K compliance. Um, that's in PHP any setting we are going to remove and some other things, but let's look into details for some. One of the biggest changes in my, from my perspective, which is going to break m some applications in some way if they don't care, is that we're changing the default care set. So traditionally, PHP automatically sends a content type header to the web browser telling it, OK, you're getting HTML content. It doesn't specify an encoding, so the browser will use, fall back to its default encoding, which is uh, Latin 1 or code page 252 uh, on Windows or whatever. So, um, so basic encoding, which is good for our environment. We have our German umlauts, and we have all that kind of stuff. And that's going to be changed, and then PHP will send uh, care set equals UTF-8, which then means that the web page you're sending will be interpreted as UTF-8. Um, so, um, or let's talk about more about where it says consequences. This is not only about the output, but we're also changing the some functions in PHP like HTML and these HTML special cars. So they, by default, interpret the, inter in the input they get as UTF-8 and not Latin 1, what they did before. When we are sending out a web page as UTF-8 and it has a form on it, the web browser will typically respond with an answer using uh, the UTF-8 encoding. So even that will change that the data you get will be UTF-8. That's a bit unfortunate if you didn't consider it, but you can prepare for this in your application already by a setting your encoding in your application properly every time. So don't rely on the, um, on the default header, but set um, content, uh, content type, text HTML, care set, ISO 88591 or whatever. And then your application will still use the old encoding and will continue to work, hopefully. When using HTML entities and HTML special cares, there's the uh, third parameter, I think, or is it the second? It's the second. The third parameter is about quotes. Um, so the, the second parameter, is it a second? Uh, one of the parameters is the encoding of the string, um, which should be used by HTML and Titus, and you should always pass an encoding there, then your future save. That's a small, it's a change in your application you should do and set the encoding there. The a proper thing might also be uh, might also to change the application, go over to UTF-8 with your application, use that encoding. On the long run, that gives you way less trouble using that encoding, but for a small time, um, it's a good way to to specific uh, to specify explicitly that you're using Latin one, and you won't have problems with this in the future. So. One other thing we're removing, uh, which I consider as a good thing, which we're rem removing, or it's actually it's the first thing on the slide, is that uh, save mode is going to be removed. Save mode was invented years back in the times before virtualization and before different other mechanisms we have nowadays as a way to um, enclose the PHP application so it has a small area for itself and uh, f especially in shared hosting environments, it's interesting to, to lock down what a PHP application can do. Over time, it has shown that the setting doesn't really work out as well as one might hope. There are 
um, places where it can be um, bypassed. There are places um, where it's hurting more than it helps. It's hard to really implement in the code, so we dropped it. What we, what we will keep is the open base deal restriction setting. So you can specify, okay, that user may only access files in that area, or in that subdirectory, and nothing more. That setting will stay and can be used continuously um, in future. Mm. So if you rely on this feature to separate things out and you want to really have a separation between things. Nowadays, virtualization has a very little overhead. There are other system, system features for separating user content. You can use some SU wrapper. You can use uh, privilege systems on some operatings and some kinds of these, which really bring the separation from the operating system and not in this layer of PHP, which is quite high up and can't do the same good job as the operating system can do itself. Okay, so for a developer, this should make things only simpler and not hurt in any way that it is being removed. Some operations people might a bit complain, some shared hosting people might complain, but um, developers should be happy about that this being gone. Another thing where everybody using PHP should be happy about being gone is our friend Magic Quotes. Who hates magic quotes? Come on, I want to see all hands. I want to see all hands. Since magic quotes really, really, really hurt. Um, if, I, if I look back at, at some old PHP code, that's what we did 10 years ago or so. Uh, dollar name had been, thanks to register globals and variable coming from the outside, the name parameter from the URL or something, we directly put it in the SQL query. And happily, this was more or less safe code. Since magic quotes did some escaping, and we are placing it inside quotes, so in some situations, this might actually be safe, but you still shouldn't do it. So what people came up with was, in a very simplified way, doing something like that. That's, that's not a good way of doing this. Getting rid of magic quotes if it's enabled and then escape everything again. Um, this, this first part is really annoying to do all the time, but you have to do it if you want to write in portable application, which works on every host. You have to get rid of these magic quotes since you can't rely on them being sh um, turned off or turned on or whatever. And so you get rid of them and then do the escaping again. Um, in, in future, one can get rid of these things. One has to mind, what one always has to mind, of course, is that you still have to do the escaping, so you can rid of the, can't get rid of the lower part. But all this handling about uh, is magic quotes on, and yeah, I have to get rid of this, is going away. And I think it's a good thing to not have any more this, this, this bad feature in there. Um, so what you should do in preparation for an update is review your application, make sure it's a good advice, and actually even, even not only for, um, for PHP 5.4 compatibility, but also general advice. Make sure you're escaping your data properly all the time, and make sure you don't rely on magic quotes to do this, since um, magic quotes are magic, and magic doesn't really work out well. Okay, so we've dropped some things in PHP 5.4. Um, di I did list some more things, small things like SQLite, two extension on the previous slide, and some other small things. So there's some void, and void can be filled with new stuff. Um, we have a, smu a, far, um, a few small additions in, in PHP. One thing is around this small tag here. That's not um, 
bound to, to the short text um, directive in PHP INI, which means it's always an, um, available. You can always use this thing with PHP 5.4, and it will, it will work in every system, which is nice for people using templates with PHP. Who doesn't know what this does, this tag? No hand showing up. Either you're ashamed of not knowing, which wouldn't be a problem, but um, I like when people um, react in some way. Um, so you can always use this one. It's really nice when you're using templates, writing templates in PHP, what some people do. Um, then, yeah, here's the example, what's going on. This will always work. Another small addition to the language we've introduced and in are introducing in PHP 5.4 is the syntax. So you, so you get a function call, a function which is returning an array, and you can directly access a specific element of the array. There's a current discussion coming up. Um, since with arrays we have two syntaxes, you can use curly braces or uh, brackets, and this will only work currently with the bracketed version. Maybe we all will extend it. I don't think so, but might be that will will work with curly braces too. Um, and it's it's a nice small addition. Many people requested it. Um, here's a more or less real life example, not real life, since um, I didn't really use this code besides the slide. But um, so here, I'm having my um, iterator over a PDO query, and then I only am interested in the first column of my result set or of my yeah, and so I can don't need a temporary variable which I used before to get the return value of the function call of the current function and then returning the first element, but I can directly access the element and everything else will be cleaned up. Had been requested for some time. Uh, we didn't imp introduce it earlier since we had some troubles or doubts about some memory handling issues, but that works fine now. Then there's another topic. Oh, again, this error on this slide. Now, uh, type hints. We, we added some. Now people are looking forward to having type hints about for floats, for integers, for strings, for booleans, for... Uh, uh, did I forget any type? I didn't forget any type. Uh, but that's not what we're adding. That was in development for some time that you can add a type int for a string and say, OK, this parameter should be a string, that parameter should be an integer, that parameter should be in float. But there were some lengthy discussions about this feature. And in the end, it was decided that it doesn't really fit in the language. I guess Derek will disagree with this. And um, yeah, so we didn't add these type hints. We added one more type hint anyways, though, which is called callable. With the callable type hint, you can say, OK, whatever it's being passed has to be something which can be called. Uh, what can be called? Called can be a string describing ha having a function name. So if there's a function foo and calling this would work, would be allowed. If not, it's a fatal error. So, it's, so type hints aren't t hints, but they produce an error. Uh, Callable could be an array with a class name and a method name, or an object, or a PHP 5.3 closure, or an anonymous function. Um, an issue with this callable type in is it doesn't specify an interface of some kind. So it's, you don't know if you can really use the function being passed. For instance, um, if foo expects two parameters, you can say, um, a call hint expecting t uh, a, a call callable thing expecting two parameters or something like that. You can only say it's callable and make no information about the about the prototype about the arguments being required, which is a bit unfortunate. But that's the way we can get it and make some people happy. Then another addition we did was dollar disk support for closures. 
That's a discussion we already had when we were releasing PHP 5.3 uh, about how should we handle dollar this, the, the reference to the current object when you are creating an closure inside an in class, inside an object method. So right here, I have a class with a function uh, get printer. And inside that uh, method, I'm creating a, a closure. And then the question is, what should, should dollar this be the same instance like in this function? And there were some discussions about it, whether we really want it and, or not. And there are still some people who say it's, an, it's a stupid idea to automatically bind the dollar this uh, reference. Or it's, yeah. Um, but it was decided to do. And so in this case, when I'm here uh, getting $A, get printer, and then use dollar $printer in some other place somewhere else in my application, somewhere far, far away, uh, the dollar this inside the function will still uh, be the same object as the dollar $A used here. Um, one thing we didn't do is if you're assigning this to a property, like if we would say uh, this x equals uh, function blah, 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 you can't directly call it. It's a limitation in the, in the language. Um, but uh, I guess that's interesting for some people already in this case. All right. Another a big feature, a actually the biggest feature introduced with PHP 5.4 is trades. Trades is sometimes called engine level copy and paste. Uh, what it basically does is you have a trade declaration which looks like a class declaration. You have some methods. You can actually even define some um, properties in there, which I don't have in this example. And then have another, then have a regular class and say this class uses the trade hello which is that one. And by that, the engine will do something which looks like it would copy the function from, from the trade as it would be standing inside that code at that place. So later on, I can instantiate my, my class, trades test, and call the hello method. And it will really behave like it had always been declared at this um, um, point in the um, language, in the, in the code. Um, you can do some modifications to these methods being, being imported. For instance, I can say, OK, I want to use from the hello world trade the, uh, the method say hello, but I want to have it protected. So when doing this, this won't work, since the method now isn't public anymore, but it's pr um, protected. Um, right. One can do more things, um, like having a trade which has a method called say something, and have another trade with a method called say something. Import both, and you get a conflict. So you have to you can rename it and say, okay, the say something of the hello trade will now be wo um, called world, and the say something from, uh, from the world class will be called say world. And then this whole thing will behave like the methods have always been there, which means they have access to private members of the my hello world class. They have access to the protected stuff. They have access to the public stuff, obviously, too. Uh, if they are private, they can be accessed from only that class, like it had been declared there. And now the big question is, of course, when do I really use this? A simple example, I don't have it on a slide, unfortunately, would be something like uh, Sebastian in the, row, in the room. No, OK, so he can't kill me. It's a singleton implementation, where you have the same implementation of a singleton. You want to use it in many, many, many classes. It always looks the same, calling, um, creating a new instance of the object, passing in the, the parameters you're getting, and you need it in different classes. 
Now, a classic way you could do is extend from the class, having this, this um, get instance method. But that doesn't really make sense from the inheritance um, point of view, uh, since a class extending that class isn't really related to to singleton class in any way, except that it wants the method. So what you traditionally have to do is write this function or copy it over all the time and again and time and again and again, which is a bit annoying. One thing I re recently saw when I was playing in the Symphony 2 area, some guy had written an implementation of trees. Uh, we had an interface and then provided a default impl implementation for most of the methods using a trait. So people who are happy with the default implementation can use the parts of the default implementation they need, but they don't have to extend from it, which is quite nice, I guess. Um, so that's one a big big change in the in the language really one thing which makes me say something like that php is one of the ma fastest evolving languages existing if you look uh, for example at java uh, oracle recently released uh, java 7 they release and they are planning to release java 8 and if you look at that in the language as it takes them way longer to change stuff and it's more they have quite smaller changes than we're having. 5.3, adding namespaces, adding closures. 5.4, adding stuff like traits, and so on. So there's really things happening in PHP faster than in other languages. It's, it, it's at least what I'm claiming. We did some small changes to, to reflection. One thing, of course, is around uh, traits. So um, when using traits, as I said, the method behaves like it had always been in that class. So and with reflection, you can see, OK, that method belongs to that class, and it has always been there. But additionally, you can see, OK, I have a class, and can ask via reflection which other um, or which traits are being referred to and get some information about this. Um, there is some trouble I had with get trait aliases, but that's fixed, so I c I should be. I shouldn't strike it out anymore. Uh, that's an older slide, actually. Um, and so there are some methods for that. But when you're having a reflection method instance showing you a method, it won't tell you which trait it's coming from. It will tell you, oh, I belong to that class, and you have no way on getting back to the original trait to get some reflection on that. Then another small. Addition we did uh, to, to the reflection API. I don't know if you know the difference. There are two kinds of extensions for PHP. There are PHP modules and send extensions. PHP modules is basically everything in PHP. Every function is in a PHP module or extension. And then there are some things like Xdebug by Derek, uh, which are, have specific features, need a deeper way in the engine or meet some other time when they initialize or something. These are send extensions, and there's some small reflection stuff around them. Um, re really small addition only. And then there's some change to the, to the command line interface. Um, of course, these uh, reflection for, um, we have these minus minus re minus minus rc flags to get reflection information about classes and extensions and functions inside PHP directly from your command line. That's extended for the send extensions. Well, small change, not really notable. Then PHP 5.2, I guess, introduced a feature called the interactive shell. So if you have PHP compiled with read line support and you call PHP-A, you get an interactive prompt where you can c type some code, get it executed, um, change, um, push the arrow up key, change the line, execute it again, and do things like that. There um, were two main concerns I received. I, it's a feature I implemented in initially. And one is that, as I said, you need the read line module enabled for this, and many distributions uh, don't like enabling extensions as compiled in objects. And they don't li really like read line 
due to some licensing issues, GPL, PHP license, and all that kind of stuff. So with PHP 5.4, if readline is available as a shared object, as an external PHP extension, this interactive prompt will still work. And there's another issue there was, if there had been a fatal error inside the execution of a line, uh, the whole shell would terminate and would not store its history, which is a bit annoying. This will now continue, usually in most cases, to run. Mm. And there was a feature request about, well, I want to show my host name inside the prompt so I know which machine I'm, I'm on. And what this looks like, I don't know if it's uh, the screenshot is um, big enough. So uh, somewhere as PHP minor dash A being called, then you get a prompt PHP uh, greater than sign, and then I change a PHP I and I setting, I can change my prompt and execute some code, and it will survive fatal errors. It's a nice tool for, for development when quickly testing out some stuff. I don't know anybody has ever used this mode. No? A few. So PHP dash A, when having read line enabled, really useful help. Another addition for, for the command line interface, actually, there are some people who say it shouldn't be in the, in the CLA. Oh, I hate the slides. Um, uh, it shouldn't be in the, in the command line interface, but should be its own binary, which is an embedded uh, web server inside the PHP binary. So you don't have to set up a web server locally to run your PHP application, but you simply say PHP dash capital S uh, localhost colon 8080, and you will have an HTTP server listening on the port 8080 on your local machine, and you can access it from the local machine and get some files. Now you need to define a document route. By default, it will use the current working directory. So if you're in the root of your application and um, start it up, um, there you go. You have your web server. And if you need a document route, uh, it's uh, dash t is the option, like a document or root, uh, since dash r and dash d were already used. So uh, t was the available one. Now, a web server in PHP, question obvi obviously is, may I use it to uh, host my application? Well, there's a small word, word development, for good reasons. There are some limitations in it. And we don't plan to make it a full-featured web server, since there are better products for that. There are people more focused on building web servers, so there's no need for us to, to compete in that area but provide something they can work with. Um, one of the limitations is PHP is single-threaded, so is this. So it can handle one request at a time. Not what you want for a web server, usually. Um, and then there are some limitations about, what, um, about configuration possibilities and all that kind of stuff. One thing, for instance, it doesn't support by itself is something like mod rewrite or other rewrite rules where you say if a URL looks like this, rewrite it to that. But what you can do is to define a router script, and a routing script, like I did on this command line. Um, this script will always be called if it's specified. This is the script which will always handle each and every request. And in there, you have access to all the different um, request variables and dollar underscore server, uh, like request URI or whatever. And you can implement your rewrite handling yourself. Um, and I think it's quite nice addition to really start in the, in the development and test your application out. And even very useful to try out PHP 5.4 and test it before we release it and give us feedback on things we are breaking, on things not good, and so on, so we can fix them before the release. I will talk about it a little bit later again. Uh, when does the session end? At half or four? 10 minutes ago. Oh. And uh, then I have to hurry. I wasn't aware of that. Um,
Okay, small addition, JSON serializable, if you have an object or you have an array. I have 25 minutes, he says. Somebody please look it up and tell me. <laughs> okay, thanks. Um, then I don't have enough slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, questions, of course. Um, so, <laughs> a small addition, uh, JSON serialize. Uh, we had it in the opening session. Uh, basically, everybody is doing nowadays, everybody, of course, is HTML5, web applications, interactive, blah, 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 and you need JSON. Uh, with, I think, 5.3 or 5.2 or whatever, we introduced a JSON encode function, which takes an array, takes an object, and encodes it as a JSON string. Now, if you're put in, putting in a more complex object structure, it might be nice to say, OK, I want to have this field and this field, but not this field. And so we're adding this JSON serializable interface. If you implement it, you need a, a method called JSON serialize. And this method has to return a JSON compliant uh, string, which won't be touched anymore by PHP, but copied over into the resulting string, and um, which can do some magic, whatever you need in your application. Really handy if you have really complex structures like an array of objects and you want to um, have these objects do some modifications or something like that. Um, question sometimes comes up with this is, okay, where's the JSON unserialize interface? Where the basic information is that's not possible. Since JSON doesn't really have the information we need, there is no type information, there is no nothing else, but the information whether it's an array or an object, um, while an object is in the hash map in, in JSON. So not really useful to, to figure out what should be done by the, um, by the decoding, which class should be, which method should be attached, so you have to do it yourself when decoding, do the, do the conversion yourself back into the objects you need. Now, question always, of course, also is, okay, we have new features, Will PHP be slower and slower and slower and slower and slower? And of course, that's not the not the case. I don't have current numbers, unfortunately. I, w I plan to run some benchmarks, but I didn't do it in the end. Um, so it's a long list of performance improvements. There are things like internal we restore strings only one time if they are used multiple times in the application, which reduces memory. Reduced memory means A, you don't have to allocate more memory, which means less time, and less memory usage means also you can handle more requests in parallel since you have more memory available. And so there are many, many um, improvements in all different areas of PHP, making it faster, hopefully at least. So that's always a good reason to, to update, especially again, cloud, cloud, cloud. Uh, spending less money for, for cloud servers is great, and also for the environment. Key message always is test it, test it, test test release candidates, test alpha versions, test beta versions. It's really important. Recently, with the PHP 5.3.7, 5.3.8, we really had some issues in, in the testing area. Like in PHP 5.3.8, currently, the is underscore a function behaves differently than it did before, which is triggering some autoloaders which are failing, which is, giving, which is breaking some applications and kind of that stuff which means it wasn't really tested enough. We have our test suite. We had some issues with running that too. That was the 5.3.7 release, so we needed the 5.3.8 release. Uh, but even if we do a better job at running our test suite for PHP, it's still just a limited set of functionality available in PHP. A key part really is that people like you who are writing applications and you're using PHP in ways which the developers didn't intend or don't, didn't think about it might be used, um, 
should really test these things. And the sooner we get feedback, the sooner we can fix it. If it's released with a bug, like the SA case, which is really, 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 really annoying for many people, um, we have the issue that the version is out. And the version which is out can hardly be pulled back since it's out and people are using it. And people maybe are depending on this new behavior, which is breaking your application. So we can switch back, probably, um, since that would break the other applications. So test it, send feedback, send bug reports. And even if sometimes in the bug tracker you get a, oh, you're stupid, it's bogus, come on. Um, please still do it, please uh, test it. Uh, if you want to learn more, you can ask me questions. That's the best way uh, right now, since I'm here. And if I'm not here, there are some URLs on the slide. And there's a website called uh, Joint In, where you can give some feedback on presentations. And usually, pr um, people presenting talks really like having some feedback to know what they can improve. Um, sometimes they notice themselves. For instance, I should have more slides. Um, and sometimes people don't notice. And it's good to have some feedback about that, since everybody wants to improve, I hope at least. So with that, thank you. <laughs>